Hey guys, this is Mitch with Finepoint CGI, and today Godot 4 Beta has released. Now this is a big moment within the Godot community because Godot 4 has officially hit feature freeze and is now only doing bug fixes. Now in celebration of that, we're gonna run through all of the major features that Godot 4 has, and we're gonna talk about some of them. That's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. With Godot 4, we have a brand new rendering engine called Vulkan, and that's gonna really improve our performance and our graphics. We have a new SDFGI screen space, indirect lighting, post-processing element built in. We have a new GPU based light map baker, which will allow us to quickly bake our scenes compared to the old CPU light map baking. We should see a lot of improvements there. We have volumetric fog, which will give us that nice spooky feeling or that nice cozy feeling when we're out in a forest. We have GPU particles that allow us to have sub emitters, collisions, and we can have trails. We also get FSR, which will help our game have performance on weaker GPUs. We also get dynamic occlusion calling, and we also have dynamic auto LOD. So all these features are gonna really bring 3D up to the forefront with Godot 4. Also coming with Godot 4 is a new physics engine. This physics engine is going to be more performant. There's going to be a couple of new collision shapes, cylinder and height map, and they completely re-implemented the soft body node to make it more efficient. And this is for both 2D and 3D, so it's a huge improvement on Godot 3. Over on the scripting front, a lot has changed. There's been a rewrite of the Godot dynamic execution engine, making it faster and better. We have new decorations for exporting and things like that, which will make our code a little bit easier to understand and easier to work with. We now have lambdas and typed arrays, and those are two huge features that will make our code a lot simpler and easier to understand. Over on the C-sharp front, we have removed mono and gained .NET 6, and this is huge. .NET 6 is faster, it's modular, it's cross-platform, which mono was already cross-platform, but now it's supported by Microsoft, which is a huge boon to moving Godot C-sharp into the future of C-sharp development. We're also getting a new GD extension engine, which basically allows us to quickly and easily create C++ modules for Godot. And finally, visual scripting has been removed. Over on the navigation front, we have a faster, more dynamic navigation system. It can now handle multiple navigation meshes and stitch them. It can do object avoidance and we can do runtime baking, which is great for those of us who use dynamic level generation. It makes it so much faster and easier to use. On the GUI front, we have more localization options. The Godot editor has now been translated into just so many languages, and we have a full new theme that just feels better. It makes more sense. Things are more outlined and laid out in a better fashion. In the audio front, we have a faster and newer audio server that will help us get better performance in our game. Multiplayer has seen a lot of changes, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer networking, DNS resolution, or some changes to the WebSocket system. It should make everything more reliable and easier to use. Godot 4 gets a brand new importing menu with GLTF and Blender support. This new importing menu is gonna make it a lot easier for us to determine what we wanna import and how we wanna import it versus doing the older method where we weren't fully sure of exactly what we were importing. On the animation front, we have a brand new animation retargeting system built into Godot 4. This is big because before, if your armatures weren't exactly the same, you couldn't share animations between them. But now with animation retargeting, you can. And that is a huge boost to productivity for the 3D community. And 
With that change, we also get a new animation library support, which is an actual library we could import and use between different models to hold our animation. Last but not least, we have a brand new tile mapper. It has a whole new tile mapping interface. It has scene tile support, some terrain painting systems, which replaces our automatic tiling system. It has the ability to copy and paste your tiles. It has the ability to use a draw line tool to draw out lines of objects. And there is so much more that I can't cover in this video. So check out the blog post in the link in the description below for all the ones I've missed, which there is a lot of features here. Now, I want to stress that this is a beta release, so it is not production ready. I don't suggest that you use it for production. Granted, I haven't seen a lot of crashes on, on my end, but I wouldn't suggest using it for your production games. But please check it out and find all the bugs you can because it will help the developers find all of the bugs that are with Godot. Because in my experience, it always works on my machine, but it never works on yours. So check it out and let them know your feedback. But with that being said, awesome job Godot developers. This is an amazing milestone for the entire community. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks.